In the very first episode of the Iceberg series, I introduced the concept of private variables inside of GameMaker. I want to expand on this topic by showing an implementation of private methods. For the most part, this implementation is very similar, but there is one trick I want to showcase that will make your workflow much easier. So if you haven't seen the first episode on how to implement private variables, then I recommend you check that video out first. Here I have a player object. The player object has one private member called life that starts at a value of 100. We have two public methods, life add and death. Let's go ahead and build out this life add method. Private of life plus equals amount. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to allow this amount value to be negative. So if I wanted to do damage to a player, I would just say life add and then pass in a negative number. And here inside of the death method, I'm just going to put instance destroy. So when death is called on the player, it will just invoke instance destroy. Now, ideally, every single time I make a modification to the private life member, I should check to see if that value ever goes below zero. If it does, then I should automatically invoke death. If life is less than or equal to zero, call death. And this is totally fine. However, this check here might start to get more complex as time goes on. We might have things like invulnerability or armor, maybe regeneration or resurrection. These are all different potential properties that could be applied to the player's life value that may prevent it from dying. So checking for death may not be as simple as just checking to see if our life value is less than zero. There may be a whole set of checks that we should run before we invoke death. Because of this, it would actually make sense for us to abstract out this logic into its own custom method. So ideally, what I would do is I would say life check death. And then inside of this, I would go ahead and move this here. Now inside of our life add method, I would say life check death. And this is a totally appropriate way to implement this. So every time I add a value to life, whether that be positive or negative, I will then immediately afterwards have our life check for death. In this case, if life is less than or equal to zero, then we will invoke the death method. Now, if I go ahead and collapse these methods and take a look at them, there's something I wanna point out here. And this goes back to the topic I covered in the first video about the importance of visibility. Things that should be visible to the user and other systems and things that shouldn't be visible. In this case, invoking life add and invoking death on the player from outside of the player object makes sense. That's something that we will do regularly and want to have access to. But hardly ever from outside of the player are we gonna check for death. So having this method called life check death be a public method doesn't actually make sense and doesn't fit inside of this design paradigm. Really what I would like to do is to have this method be a private method so that we can still have access to it from within the player but it isn't cluttering up our space and seeming like something that we should be invoking from outside of the player. Just the same way that we add members to our private struct we can go ahead and add methods to this private struct. So inside of here I could say life check death is function and pass this in here. And now when we do life add, instead of just calling life check death, we need to change the context in which we are trying to invoke this method. So I will just prefix it by saying double underscore dot life check death. Now this is the most basic example of how to implement private methods. However, if I run this project right now, it would actually crash. And that's because I'm defining this function inside of the private struct, which means by default, GameMaker will bind this function to the private struct. And so all of the code inside of the function will run as though it were running inside of the private struct. And since the method death is declared in the public scope, trying to call it from the private scope would cause a crash. Additionally, this private struct is only accessible from the public scope. So trying to access the life member of the private struct from inside of the private struct would also crash. So by allowing GameMaker to default this method binding to the private struct by using just the generic vanilla implementation, we actually have issues here. This method isn't bound to the public scope the way that we've written this code. So there's two ways that we can solve this problem. One is to change all of the code inside of it to account for it being bound to the private scope. In order to do that, I would just change this to life and change this to other.death. 
this is one way to solve this problem, but other tends to have kind of odd behavior sometimes and isn't always necessarily what we might think it is because it's going to depend on where this method is called. So in this case, I call it from the player, but if I were to call it from somewhere else, other might start to change. And so I don't really like this implementation. So what I actually prefer to do is I prefer to leave the code inside of it written as though it were bound to the public scope. And then I just like to manually define the method binding for this function. And the way that I like to do this is at the top of the create event, I'm going to say var self is self. I'm going to capture a reference to the self struct. And then I'm going to use game makers built in runtime function called method. And I'm going to explicitly define the method binding by pointing it to the self. I'm not going to go into the details of this method function, this video, but just know that by using this function, we're not allowing game maker to define who gets the function. We are defining who gets the function. So here I'm saying life check death is called from inside the player's private struct, but the code is going to run as though it's inside the player's public self. Now you might ask yourself, well, why can't I just say bind it to self? If I'm saying self of self up here, and then I bind it down here, you know, that seems a little redundant. And that's because self is actually context sensitive. So self from inside of the private struct is the private struct. Self from outside of the private struct is the player. So if I just leave it as self, then it's going to run exactly the same way as if I just typed it this way. So if the method is implemented generically, or I implement the method using this self-reference, the outcome is actually going to be the same. And again, that's because the self-reference is contextual. We're calling self from inside the private struct, so self is the private struct. But by capturing it outside of the private struct, at the top of the player object, by saying var self is self, and because this is a temporary variable, it will be preserved even through these nested structures. Now, some Someone's out there saying, Alex, you can actually just use other in that case. You don't need to create a new local variable to reference the scope outside of the private struct. You can just use other because you're calling it from inside the private struct. So it will know the reference outside of the private struct. And this is true. You could technically leave it like this and you would get the same output. However, there are many times where I prefer to have layers of nested structs even within my private struct. So the other reference gets kind of muddied and lost as we go deeper down that structure. So what I like to do is just to keep it really simple is just create a local snapshot of the self-reference using a local variable and then just make sure all of my private methods are bound to this local self-reference. And so it's going to be preserved no matter how deep or how many layers of structures I go down. To really drive this point home, I want to show a real world example of this system in action. So here is a character controller for a game that I've been working on for almost a year now. And if I scroll down to this life section, I can see that I have some public methods and I have a private section. These public methods do exactly what you think they would do. They act on our life value. And if I open up this private struct, you'll see that I have a resource instance. When this resource on empty, let me define some callback here saying that when this resource is empty, I want to check if life end check passes and is validated. And if so, we call life end. Life end check is a public method, life end is a public method. But the only way that I'm able to access them is because I've bound this function to the public scope of this object. So I can call the members and methods the same exact way I would if this was declared as a public method. Okay, I think that's everything for this topic. The main thing I wanted to cover was declaring var self equals self and using that local variable in order to do our private method binding. If you're wanting to use this technique but don't feel Feel like you quite understand it. I'm going to give you the shortcut here. Let's say you're using private variables and you really like this structure and want to implement in your project, but you still don't quite feel like you understand what the hell is going on here. The short answer to it is every method that you want to declare inside of your private struct, just use this. Just use this every single time and then write the code the same way you normally would. The same way that I was able to copy and paste this from when it was out here to when it's down here. That's that's all you got to do. So create var self equals self at the top the object, make sure that when you implement a method, you use the method binding and bind it to this fair self, and then write the code the same way that you would normally inside of a public method. All right, so this is it. I didn't get to cover the nuances of this runtime function method, but I plan to cover that a little bit more in some upcoming videos. I definitely recommend taking a look at the game maker documentation and trying to familiarize yourself with this method function because it's extremely powerful and something that we're going to come back to again.